Oh, Ooh, yeah. sorry, we're live. <laughs> Look at us all on time. I was Rob's uh, checking looking to see up. if the coconut vendor stopped by his place yet. <laughs> I was looking at all the palm trees and the breeze and yeah, still in Costa Rica, five more weeks and we're home, but, uh, here we are. I want to, uh, we'll talk, we're going to talk about some stuff today. Maybe talk about DP review. Uh, it was news to James and our special guest is James Haji Hodgins, creator of the Haji soft, which is not a, not a sexual <laughs> affliction. <laughs> Uh, John made the. Uh, <laughs> never mind. I'm not. I'm going to shut up. So, so, uh, so DP review. It's uh, yeah. The close. I mean, I haven't yeah, been on closing. DP, I haven't been on DP review in years. So I just. Uh, uh, you actually, remember that site, right? Oh, I do remember it. But I'm. I was actually. Uh, so it's closing. I was a little bit so surprised it's open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Well, it's, who goes to that for reviews anymore? I mean, reviews yeah. are at the every every review with uh, is mostly YouTube now because you can get uh -huh. more in depth reviews on any Definitely. piece of equipment, uh, right? And walkthroughs on YouTube. So I was actually surprised that uh, like I'm, yeah. not surprised, I'm not surprised it's closing. Well said. In a nutshell, things change. Technology changes everything. Yeah. So, but but would you not like DP review was sort of like a forum. Um, yeah, it was like a forum, right? Online forum. Uh, I'm surprised that if they haven't, if they didn't, I'm surprised DP Review didn't create a YouTube channel. That would be the way to go. Yeah, they they might have. We that. just don't they know. Should did that. They should have did that years ago. If they haven't, I don't know. They might have. But yeah. if you're giving all these reviews, but mostly yeah. it was a forum where people are giving reviews. It was uh, like DP Review did. They do their own review, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it was forum based. But I mean, honest yeah. truth, uh, forums are kind of they are going in the way of the past unless it's a specific yeah. paid paid you know learning We're, yeah education. specialized knowledge exactly Everything's so so james social media now yeah exactly yeah everything's changing so so james back in the day dp review i mean you were buddy buddies with the guy who ran the whole thing remember that and he mm -hmm. he 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 was like yeah anytime you guys want to promote no bs he was quite open to that and uh, yeah. you know we we did a few promotions with him and but it, at the time, it was like, this is a new medium, a new uh, way to communicate. And we were all like, whoa. And DP Review was like one of the big granddaddies back you in know, the day. It, it's, hold on, hold on one second. Just be two, two seconds, I want to show you something. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even know they were going on. I haven't been on DP Review in a long time. Yeah, I got. So like we're talking about forums. I literally found these yesterday. You know, the Yamaha motorcycle. Oh, forum. yeah. Remember we had one of those dedicated to your uh -huh. bike. I mean, that was forums were, <laughs> forums were, uh, were the things yeah. where we got all our information. We all yeah. gathered together in a like-minded group with the same interests and stuff like that. And, yeah, when it was new, when forums were new, I mean, everything – everything was it had its own personal form but now it's now it's changed to uh you know TikTok, youtube and uh facebook groups right mm -hmm. so yeah I'm, I'm not surprised that dp review uh if they didn't make any of those changes where they specialized into like a youtube channel or something and yeah. got more creative then I mean, yeah the cost, the cost of what it's going to probably run compared uh -huh. to what they what are they actually like how are they actually getting paid right so apparently amazon owned it so i guess at really? some point they bought them out yeah so i didn't know, that. I, didn't know yeah. that either. I just found that out yesterday but i got an amazon email today that. i got an email today from sony alpha forum which i belong to and i never really do much in there and they said uh blah 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 as a former dp review member who has recently joined this sony alpha forum we want to extend a warm welcome so they're they're saying come on over to the sony alpha forum Right, right. Uh, that's what the, this email. So that's kind of a smart move, but I guess they're still doing a forum, Sony yeah. Alpha, and uh, yeah, we'll see how long that. I just lasts. don't know how popular it is with the younger generation, because I mean and YouTube, because we, we were introduced to forums when we were starting out, so that yeah. was kind of our thing. But the younger generation, I mean, they have no idea what forums are, in my opinion. You know, because uh, everything would have been YouTube or Facebook groups. Yep. Yeah, that's where it is now, and who knows where it's going to be in 10 years, right? Exactly. exactly. Any predictions there, boys? Um, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be more of kind of the same, like uh, yeah. YouTube. Now, it might come back. There might be specific 
forums, but they'll just be, it'll be different. I think with like, when you get into the metaverse and stuff like that, you're literally going to have forums in some sort of a virtual reality, like whether it's with the Oculus goggles or something like that, where you can go in there and, you know, talk to like-minded groups and people and share ideas. And all. I think it's going to be that way. It'll uh -huh. be like forum type base, but it's going to be avatar, you know, based virtual reality that's I think everything's still going to be through social media though because even yes, now i'm noticing there are people on instagram they're doing these broadcast connection things or whatever and it's like, all it is is basically like a forum group that you can go in and get information on that channel i know ben markham just started one the other day so yeah i'm seeing so. some of those now yeah right. like we'll see how it goes basically. but uh, yeah anyways what do you guys uh, been up to let's start uh I mostly I want to hear from James. I hear from John all the time. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not even going to touch. New light today. That's a big. What'd you get? For me. What'd you get? What'd you I, get? I went and got an Aperture Amaran 60D. Oh, it's nice! Really tiny video light. That's yeah. Bright as it's like 65 watts, but it's really bright. Right now, I've got it on 10.3 percent. Now, do you have to light. plug that in the wall, or is it battery? It plugs operated? in the wall, but it actually yeah. comes with a battery connection to it that you can pop it on and use two sony batteries on it i haven't right, tried right. that yet because i don't have sony batteries but this is the first time using it so yeah it looks good too it's nice lighting on you i have my 32 inch godox octa box on there with a grid mm -hmm. off, so. I know. so it's i think it looks good would you I use would... that on a well you don't shoot weddings but you know if you're doing you a could. shoot like you know whatever on location I'm going to test light. it one day on a photo shoot where I can use it as an, a constant light. Like it's a video. I would. So, so I did a, uh, I did a shoot. We were in Northwest territories last summer and we're, we did interviews for um, some of the CEOs and we were, you know, we had the, you know, constant led lights all set up for the interviews and they wanted a headshot. So I was like, no sense of me setting up all my equipment. I'll just use the the main light, which was a big soft box as well, and I'll just use it as the main light and kicker light. And I literally just like dropped her down to like 1.4 aperture at about ISO 800, and I got the shutter speed to handhold that. And man, it was beautiful. It turned out really awesome. oh sharp as can be. It was a beautiful portrait, which makes me think like, you know what? Maybe you know I started looking into using LED constant lights for my underground stuff and on site stuff surface. The only issue I had uh, is either you have to plug them in or you have to use these battery packs, which are actually very cumbersome and heavy. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've stuck with my Godox, uh, my Godox lights. Yeah. So, you know, if I can find that battery operated without having the big extra battery pack, that's where I would uh -huh. go. Well, well what's comes with what... this uh, V mount that just, yeah. or V lock, yeah. I guess they call it. And it yeah, that's puts... what we use two Sony batteries on it. It just goes right on the side of it. It's really oh, yeah. light and it's like really small. It fits in the palm of my yeah. hand. Yeah. So anyways, so, uh, I used, I use an led light as the main light for uh, a portrait there uh, before John, and it worked out awesome. It worked out really well. You just so, have to make sure that you have like, it's not in a bright light area because yeah, you yeah. Have so much. So James, what Jane, what Jan, what John just showed you that is yeah. suitable. That would be suitable. Yeah. Compare it to what was the vagabond? That was a pretty heavy yeah. We'll see the the battery packs. The battery packs, the packs that we were using um, uh -huh. for that shoot were vagabond style. Like that's how big they were. So they're big uh -huh. and cumbersome and heavy. It just made it. Uh, everything's yeah. getting lean and mean. But so it will. Any, yep. any chance you could? Do you have a picture of what you shot at Northwest Territories? You could show us um, quick. If not, don't worry about it. Yeah. And the thing I like about this too, James, is it comes with the Sidious app that Aperture uses. That you just download and i can control the power of this this is the 5600 kelvin version the daylight version, right the 60d but there's a 60x which is a bi-color and you can also change the colors on it and stuff too uh, but i can right now this is at 10.3 percent. i was telling you earlier now i can braise this up like that or i can put it right down all from my phone nice so very easy to control I don't see you guys right now. I'm just doing a quick search here, but uh, no, I figured you me, were. Uh, That's why I did that. But yeah, I like it. And I sent Rob the, uh, and it goes back to what we were talking about forums and that. The way I got to find out if this was a good light to buy in that was YouTube. Went on YouTube, looked at all different reviews, all from like a year ago, but they were all praising this light. So, um, so I bought one for two hundred, just over two hundred dollars Canadian. Or like That's really good American. price. That's yeah, a really good price. 
That's a really good price, John. Now it is a plastic body, but I don't care. Like I'm not smashing it around in that. So. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the last shoot we did, um, we were in Northern Ontario. We used the, um, I think it's Amran as well, if not Aperture, but they were actually uh, LED lights, but it was a flat almost like as thin as yep. like a, a paper is a flat led that you place into the soft box and everything yep. it was actually really nice because you can just roll it up yeah it's like a light um, panel or something it was a light panel yeah it was actually really, oh, really? really cool yeah, yeah it was well, this really one, cool this one amaran it's made by aperture so it's a good line okay. it's good reputation yeah i have a couple of amaran uh amaran and if you lights. get other aperture devices you can use the same app with it so you can actually have three or four of these yep. lights and you can control them all by your phone, by the phone. that's exa- that's what my buddy adam did he had everything controlled by his phone yep. It was, it was pretty cool. But we do a little video now too. So it allows me to do video for like talking head type videos. If you're doing interviews and stuff. Yeah. Right, right. It's pretty bright. eh? Yeah. This is 10%. that's on me right now. Oh, with wow. the softbox on. And you can plug it in a wall too. Yeah. It's plugged in right now. And you can use the batteries. Those two Sony batteries. Those two Sony. I don't Actually. know how long the Sony batteries last. I'd have to check that out, but can I now, see what other people like? that have the V text? Yeah. Anybody who have like you get the ones that have those V lock, you can buy those batteries that have a V lock on them. Oh, okay, that that's not the same. In. Yeah, that V lock comes pretty with the cool. two Sony camcorder type batteries. Okay, now bring that closer to me, Johnny. The Which front, side? this side. Yeah, the battery or, side. Yeah, the camera. <laughs> it looks like uh, what I use for my Sony cameras, almost. I think maybe I don't know. Could be close, and then it's probably like those NP. Sony batteries, the NP and fifties. I just know I got about sixteen of them because I got so many damn Sony cameras. And then on the now. side of the actual light, it has a little slot that this little V mount just slides right. Very handy. And then this screws in the back. So I could see grabbing one of those, those batteries, and running when I'm doing the wedding. I need a light really quick. Exactly. You know, which was a trend that like Jerry Jonas and many others like him were doing years ago with a constant light source. Right. Right. Location. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know how you're doing a crap shoot, James? One of my yep. favorite things to do, right? And uh, you just see a great spot, and you're like, oh, I just need a little extra light. Uh, kind of what you're doing with some of your mining photography, crap shoots underground. No, yeah. but you see a scene, and you just need lead lights, and it works, right? Oh, exactly. I used a couple of LED panels last night. I used them with uh, – I got two small LED panels that I use because I can change the um, – the colors of them so instead of putting a light on with gel i'll just uh set the color tone like last night yesterday i'd use blue as the i wanted to light up the blue because there was a light on the back of the machine that was flashing blue and uh-huh. it was lighting up the ceiling so i actually ex- accentuated that with a uh, if that's a word um cool. with the led panel so it just made it a little bit uh you know a little bit easier like that you have to drag the shutter a bit because it's not um you know, it's not as powerful as uh, putting a gel on one of my strobes or whatever. But uh-huh. yeah, I had one of my Kodox crash and burn uh, a while back, and I haven't replaced it yet. So I just replaced it with these two LED. Uh, oh, really? LED. Yeah. LED Is that cast. you or John showing the screen? That's me. That's that that light right there. Let me see. And then. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. Went the wrong way. Can you show? Can you show the battery? Uh, that yeah, like, I what, thought that I was there? there, and I don't know what happened. Rob's. I didn't do anything. <laughs> I had it on here on Rob's thing there. There we go. So there's the uh, softbox your itself. Yeah, that's a nice and size softbox. So it works in. There's the light there. So you see it's really tiny. Yeah, yeah, it's super tiny. And I wonder if I can zoom in on this somehow. <clears throat> that's the V-lock part there. That okay, the yeah. piece just slides into there. Yeah. And uh, and then I sent Rob. So the, with, the, with the V-lock, if I understand, John, like you could actually, like I've got other uh, batteries that I use. Like you can get the V-lock for specific types of batteries, could you not? Yeah, and I think you could use it. Uh, now, some of them, apparently the uh, attachment yeah. is different. So you might have to reinforce the attachment. You should, uh, you should s- adapter for it. send me the info of that light. I will, for sure. Um, I will... Uh... I will definitely look into that. I will definitely send you the info. And I'll send you the one from a year ago, the one guy who I do trust with his reviews. And he reviews all types of stuff. And he had a really good review on it. So Who's that? So we know. the one I sent you. I sent you that video. Um, who was it here? I'll find it for you because I sent it to Rob. I know I did. Yeah, I, I can go dig it up too. But if you have it handy. I have it here. It's, uh, let's here see go. what the guy's name is on YouTube here. Uh Caleb's there he is. His name. Yeah. Okay, I found the I found the images. Now I just got to find the image. <laughs> <laughs> he found them, but he's got to find them. DSLR yeah, video shooter is that guy's yeah, video channel. Yeah, this is channel. the guy right here. 
DSLR video shooter, and that's the two lights there. One there is, is the that one's the one I 170 have. One hundred seventy US. The, uh, it's a good price. And this oh, it's F amazing how cheap things are getting. See, for me, I because I I did watch this. It's funny. I watched this video, but for me, it was that whole <clears throat> the V lock thing. But what's interesting is because I always associated the V lock with what my buddy has, which is big, right? Because he he uses it to run. Uh, he uses these batteries to run his two. Uh, to, uh, I think I'm muted. Cinema, the cinema cameras. <clears throat> so. We can hear you, I can hear you. So yeah, so that little V lock there that uses your small Sony batteries, that's yeah. more of what I would be interested in. So yeah. You I'm just gotta imagine. find out how long those Sony batteries will last. Cause I heard one guy say he didn't last long, but if you can get bigger power ones too. So But I would also yeah, I would uh I would plug the batteries in, turn the light on full and mm -hmm. just leave it. <laughs> yeah, that's probably just what leave. I'll do. Now the one thing I did find out is one guy tried it on one of the reviews and they said that uh you have to use two batteries, so you can't just put one in. You have to put both of them in. You have to put both in, right? Yeah. All right. So yeah, so I um, so yeah, so I did use uh, I did use the LED lights uh, to to light up uh, one of my shots there, and uh, I had a kicker light that we used was an LED. Uh, we had some light coming in on the background through an open uh, garage door, and then I used one of those lights like that, John. Um, can't hear me. You know, LED. I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, Rob. I don't can you hear us? Hear us. Ah, you can't hear us. That's okay. <laughs> you can keep going there, James. Um, I'll, I'll text him and tell him that he, we can hear him. Yeah. We hear you. <laughs> Make sure I can write it down. <laughs> write it down. No, 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 no. He probably muted himself. We hear you. Let's see if he gets that. Look, but... look at the camera. All right, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Try and so plug you can hear me. Headphones Just nod. All right, thanks. All right, so um, so yeah, so if you wanna, if you, I don't know. If I you can't can hear you guys. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, unplug your. Uh, we should unplug his I'm thing. Plug. plug back in. Oh, you're typing. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> you're faster than I am. Who, me Technology, you gotta love it. Yeah. And while he's there, I notice uh, some people have come in here. Uh, John De Brule says, hi, guys. And who else is in here? Uh, so if you want to... He hears them, so I mean, yeah. he's telling them to reboot too. John Rumble's here too. He's from your neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah just talking to John. Um, so if you go to my screen, I don't know, how do I share my screen? Uh, uh, at the bottom, does it say present? Let me see here. Do, do, do. It's my birthday. No, At the no, bottom no. of your thing, you might my... say present. No, it says stop cam setting. Oh, yeah, present. Here we go. Present. And then you present, and then you share want screen. to go share screen. All right. Uh, and then yes, it gives you a says. bunch of choices. There we go. Share screen. Listen to... When I see it down here, I'll bring it in for you. There we go. We oh, still can't hear you guys. I can hear you. So now Damn. you can see my screen. I can now, yep. Yeah, so this is one of the images that I use. It was watch. It was strictly LED lights, no strobes. So I think I was around like one point f one point four. I had a fifty one point four, and I had it at one point four, and um, uh, I think like I still managed to get like eight hundredth of a second. So I handheld this, but uh, yeah, it's tack sharp. It was really easy, and it was just with one of those LED lights coming in as a main, and then kicker on. As you can see, I was gonna I, say I there's one on the kicker there too. I left that in there just uh, for that, and then we had a That's little an LED bit of, also. Yeah. And then had a little bit of light coming in from that garage door that was open that just kind of added a little bit on the on the on his right side of his face so, but it worked out well because uh normally great. normally i'd set up my own equipment but since the the videographer's equipment was already there he's like well just use mine i was like yeah you know what why not so managed to rip off a few of these uh pretty quickly without having to uh set up and test and all that so um yeah i'm probably gonna go um uh, that route it's just uh above ground when you have daylight it's a little bit hard but underground i mean you do not need a lot of light to underground right so um i mean i've lit i've lit stuff up with uh my flashlights before and i'll i'll bring an actual a, vehicle yeah. i'll bring in a vehicle into a background just to light up uh something uh you know whatever whatever i can get my hands on at that time so I, i've yeah. known wedding photographers who have actually used little flashlights to do the ring shot or something like that they just yeah use these little oh yeah yeah macro type stuff <clears throat> 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So even with my cap lamps, I've got a couple of cap lamps and I'll actually, uh, I'll actually set those up. Um, but even like uh, yesterday I had to do that. Uh, we were running for time because uh, we had a cage time at seven o'clock. No, 6.30. So be at the site for 6, cage time at 6.30, got there at 6, so like your cage time's now at 8. And instead of coming up at 12, we need to be up at 11. So that cut my production time down by a lot. So <laughs> a lot a lot of the times it was uh, not scrambled, but, uh, yeah, I, I, no. used, uh, I used LED lights a little bit more uh, that time just because uh, well, time was of the essence. If you look right here, I got that little kicker. It's a little yep. warmer. And that yep. all that is, it's another one of these guys. Oh yeah, yeah. By Ulanzi, and it's a bicolor one, and so I've got it as a little warmer, and it goes like really, really bright too. And uh, I think I got a pack of two of these, the one that's over there, and this one for like probably like a hundred bucks or something. I that's can't remember what it was at, at the time. It was like a hundred or seventy-five bucks or something like that. Actually, I think they were cheaper. I think it was like thirty, forty bucks for both. Oh really? Yeah. And you can yeah, change. Uh, that you I can did... change LED colors on that. Yeah, right on the back there. There's oh, like yeah, a scale, yeah. and so when I have it turned on. Right now, you can see it's at this one's almost at 32 Kelvin. Right, right. It's focusing or not, but it's at like 3190. It should be at yeah, 32, yeah. and then it's got the battery, how charged it is. So it's a um, built-in battery. Doesn't take like double A's. Built-in battery, and it has a USB-C port there. See, I grab so a few, I grab a few of those because yeah. I always like to light up the inside of a cab or something like that, uh, or if I'm doing tabletop stuff, right, just to get that extra. It also does the effects like police and stuff so like mine that. does all that, but it's huge. Mine's mine's like uh, like a fourteen inch. Okay. It does yeah, all I have one too. of those. I have a twelve by twelve or whatever yeah. too. That was my main light. All the other times until today, my main light was like a twelve by twelve panel light from Pixel. Right, right. It was just had those little, all those little dot uh, type lights in it, and yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. bicolor too. It went from thirty two hundred to eight thousand, I think, Kelvin, and that's what uh -huh. I used here. And then I bought this one. And now I can use that one as a kicker somewhere or a background light. But this one's, like I said, it's at 3,200. But if I change, like you can see, like I can go, oops, I don't know what it's doing there. Um, I could change all through the color spectrum. There's yeah, that's kind of cool. And it's hard to see, I know, but like if I'm sure. I've been, using, I've been using gels a lot lately. Um, yeah, so I like this because it does all that. So yeah, that's kind of cool. So, and that's what I'm using right now as a kicker. And then I got this pixel one behind me. When you, when you get your lights out, do you ever uh, grab your light and actually take like an old school flash meter just to see what the output is from like, that's say, all I do. Feet? So that's what do you get? Do. What do you get for an output on that? For this yeah. one right now, I think I'm at 2.0 right now on my oh, okay. video camera here that I'm using. Yeah. It's at 2.0 right now, nice. but that's at 10% too. Yeah, I just yeah. do it because on video cameras, you want that depth of field the, yeah exactly the shallow depth of field but um i haven't tried it on photography yet so i'll probably try that let me know how you make up with it and i definitely will i'm gonna try be cool. it today or tomorrow oh yeah hey, can, 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 hear can you hook it up to can you hook it up to your drone and just sort of do some yeah, it's duct tape man anything can be hooked up to a drone <laughs> maybe this little guy i can <laughs> <laughs> although there is little drone ones you can put on there actually you can buy on amazon you just got to make sure if you're doing the mini drones you get one that's not going to make it over that 250 grams or else then you yeah. need a license and stuff Rob, Hold did on. you see that portrait that I did? Yeah, did the, the dude with the hard hat and the yeah, yeah, big tires the, in the back. Yeah, that, that was, was with the LED lights. Wow, that looked like a studio setup with a green exactly. screen. That was amazing. That's what I get a lot of. It's like, oh, were you green screening that? And they're like, no, no, it's all in the shop. It's and real like, life. Oh, it looks like a green screen. It's like, <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. But. Green screen's taken over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a really good Netflix show with, uh, it's about this guy's psychiatrist. He's a famous actor down in Hollywood. What the hell is yeah, his Harrison name? Ford? No, the guy's name is Stutz. That's okay. the name of the, uh, the, the, the actor, you all know him. He was in, he was, I think he was an end of days. He was always a chubby guy. He struggled with his weight. Yeah. Seth, uh, Seth no. Rogen. No, no, no. It's another the one guy from Stand By Me. He's a little chubby. No, 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 no. It's too, that's too old. Oh, is it the guy from Forgetting Sarah Marshall? No, um, his first movie. Uh, oh, I'll get I know to it later. You're talking about now. I'll get to it later. Curly hair guy. Yeah, a uh, little well, bit. At one point he did. Yeah, I know who you're talking about now. Now his hair is all. He's all like slim and yeah. funky looking. And anyways, uh, I can. I'm just trying to think of his first movie where it was all a bunch of young teenage boys. And they yeah, were I know exactly like... who you're talking about now. I just don't know his name. <laughs> it was anyways. Jonah, it's Jonah a... Hill. Jonah, yes, Jonah yeah. Hill. Yeah. 
Jonah Hill, really good documentary. And the reason I bring it up is because at some point he shows you green screen to sort of make a parallel metaphor to how fake things are. Really good documentary if you want to watch something totally captivating. Yeah. Sure. Totally. It's called Stutz. The newer Anyways. version of green screen now, if you ever watch that show Mandalorian on the Disney mm -hmm. Channel. And that's yeah, all done night. with, uh, it's a room that's got these big, huge um, screens that are, the backgrounds are actually on the screens and the cameras are all on mounts that they move and it looks like you're actually out in the desert or whatever. In a way, it's got to kind of, in a way, it's got to kind of suck for actors now, right? It's like, oh, you get to travel the world. So there's, oh, now we just got to go into a green box room, you know, <laughs> spend like 15 hours in a green box room. <laughs> Whereas like a lot of the times, you know, you got to think like a lot of the times when you're in that environment, you probably become more of the character because you're in yeah. that environment, right? And that's what they do so. with these new ones now. They're in the environment. It's not green screen anymore. It's actually a big projected screen that's circled. It's like a big dome. And <laughs> right. it's 360 degrees around and they have these cameras on mounts and they make the flooring and everything. And then it's like you're actually really out there. Wow. So they don't use green so, screen for them. So James, what else have yeah. you been up to? uh working lots of work work's getting busy traveling a lot uh i'm off to Weren't, weren't you far away somewhere i was in south africa a few months ago northwest territories south yeah. africa was interesting that's a lot of mileage what were you doing in south africa uh we were shooting a video and i was doing like a more of a photo journalistic style um type it wasn't anything like i call it b-roll stuff now from the videos you know you got the creative aspect where we set up for interviews and all that and then you got b-roll which is just going around with your gimbal and everything so i've kind of accustomed that to my photography now i've got my creative photography which is where i set up all my lights and do that do everything and then i've got b-roll photography which would be considered like a photo journalist uh, crap shoot type just go around and shoot what you can get people places and stuff like that. really so, yeah so we Sorry, were is this mines and stuff yeah this was a uranium mine that was okay. um they had their first uh inaugural uh blasting for the underground portal so it was like the first blast so it was actually a really big deal because they had like um they had people come from all over on their camels and donkeys and like, all dressed all dressed up in like beautiful colored guards and everything. Oh, it was the it was camels, cultural. The, the, it was camels cultural. Were, the camels were all decorated, like hundreds of camels, you know, like hundreds wow. of people from hours and hours and hours away. Um, yeah, really? It was, yeah, it was pretty. And then they had this big camel parade where they all the camels, they start walking, but then they start running. Like, it was pretty. It was cool. It was cool to see. You got to see all that. I got to see the, all of that, yeah. No way you can show us any pictures. Can um, they all start running at James. Uh, yeah, I've got pictures somewhere. Go after the Canadian. <laughs> I got <laughs> Yeah, picture somewhere uh so yeah it was it was pretty it was pretty cool to uh pretty cool to see so yeah so i just did like what i just did a lot of um what i would call uh you know like i said like uh b-roll type photography yeah or anything uh, but it was still fun i mean i still take the b-roll stuff seriously right so i usually have like my 100 to 400 and then i have a uh and then i switch between my 50 and my 28 just to get uh whatever different aspects i can but i have to basically go around and like i basically covering like everything i possibly can so you know lots of people infrastructure you know i've got v victor's doing drone stuff and then adam's doing the same thing he's doing b-roll um uh b-roll video and stuff like that and then it's too cool know, yeah it was and then and then we set up for interviews in some spot where you know like with adam when like with penda when they do their interviews it's uh it's not like put the guy down put the camera on it's like dual camera and high-end cameras and uh in audio and then all lighting and everything because uh i find uh adam is like a very um well he's a very professional but uh he he the, you know how we always say you got to know lighting rob uh -huh. like, like you know and we learned lighting like adam knows lighting like he can okay. look at it he looks at a scene breaks it all down and then like lights it like so it's always like always uh i'm always amazed when i look at kind of okay, what wait. we what we see and then when you're looking yeah. through the, the the video camera with the lighting uh -huh. you're like wow like what a transformation okay. you know he's but he's video though right he's video yeah. okay but, but he you knows still like, can you respect knows, that and we can oh learn. completely like i always learn from so my last um my last shoot that i just did was uh i literally went with penda as a production assistant so I didn't even okay. have to I didn't even have to photograph. I just went and because I can set up lights and all that, right? Like yep. I mean, I know how to set up lights, so it saves time, right? 
So uh -huh. we, we set up for all the interviews and all that. And uh, I actually didn't mind it because I don't have that responsibility of photography, mm -hmm. uh, but I still get paid very well. So yeah. I'm, quite, uh, I'm quite happy to do, I, I, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather go do that than not do Key anything point. at all. Right. Key um, point. I get yeah. paid well. <laughs> and then, well, exactly. And then I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot too from watching. Yeah. And okay. I got to, let's yeah. touch on this subject for, because yeah. I know your story, but I don't know if John knows it and others who are listening and watching that you started working with this company and they're from Northern Ontario, I believe. They're da from down South, but Victor, Victor, uh, Victor Chu, uh, the founder and CEO of Pennant Productions was from, is from Sudbury. His parents' oh, okay. family owned the Orient restaurant that was on right. the yeah. And, 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 I, and I went to I went to kindergarten even before with Victor. <laughs> yeah. So we've known each other for like 45 years. But he obviously likes working with you as does the team because yes. I've noticed this progress and this over the yeah. years you've been working with these guys and you kind of like are part of their team now. It's like you work under their umbrella. You're not just yeah. an outside guy anymore. No. So you, and you're taking yeah. on new roles and responsibilities, yes. especially with this South Africa shoot. Yeah. So it, you see, uh, they're obviously well placed in the industry as a company that's well respected in that niche. And, and we're going to grow more now. Okay. Even more. Well, that's yeah, where I'm I, going I, with this. I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't align myself so or immerse myself in such so much in an individual company as I would with Penda if I didn't see the the professionalism and quality you know of an end product you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so you know we as photographers hold ourselves to a high standard well so do they in everything else they do you know like the video the end product is and the customer service is all up there with the values that i hold yeah um which you know and then we've got i mean i'm leaving i go next week to quebec uh that's on my own and then we fly with i fly with penda to mexico and then we're in be we we're done for two days then we go back to northwest territories and then this summer there's talks of uh back to south africa uh, alaska and then yeah. whatever else we can we can push wow. through so i'll be working with them quite a bit um my goal and role in that we've discussed is uh eventually um i will i will be working with penda strictly Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It's interesting how that mm -hmm. kind of yeah, evolved. That's, that's, that's where we're kind of in talks and, uh, yeah. where I kind of, where I'd like to see it too. Cause even right now, if I have to, if somebody contacts me for an out of town gig, I kind of send them to Penda, yeah. you know, and if they get the gig, I know they're going to hire me as a photographer. And if they mm -hmm. don't get the gig, well, then I'm okay with that because Penda's got such a great team and a communications team uh, that like they take care of all my travel. They take care of everything. All I got to do yeah. is just show up and do my job, which is what yeah. I want to do. I don't want to deal with the logistics of booking travel plans, hotels, uh -huh. like all uh -huh. that back end stuff. I just uh -huh. don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. So it's kind of like I talked to Victor when we were on the last show. I was like, I kind of want you guys to be like my agent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like, cool just, with that. just like, oh, yeah, he's, he's cool with that. Well, he's it's got like, a team. How many employees do you think he has? Oh, I don't know, nine or ten. Yeah, and they're yeah. tight. Obviously, they're tight. Good yeah, values. Yeah, and, and all like they all do their jobs so well. But then again, we all work as a yeah. team. Like nobody's afraid to like you know if we're done our job, well, let's go help the other person do their job because it gets everything done faster and more efficient. And yeah, because in the end, it's all about the end product. It's not about okay, well, I did my job, so I'm going to sit and relax and wait for you to finish yours. No, like we all think it's it's a real really cohesive team. Team that's there. cool so, so that's why i like working with them so i've been pushing the last few years i've been pushing more of uh, my the out of town uh, and out of country uh, inquiries that i get to kind of maybe go with them because not only can we just do the video uh, the photography well then we can do the video and then you know also a lot more right so yeah so yeah yeah that's we'll cool. see we'll see that's how it awesome. goes i'm still going to do everything i'm doing here mm -hmm. but any of my out of town stuff uh yeah i'll uh i'll i gladly just kind of you know, CC and send it over. I I'd love predict to see some of that stuff one day. I yeah. predict a bright future. Uh, it's going to be a different. Uh, it's going to be a different year, that's for sure. It's going to be good, though. You know, it's funny. You look back for those who don't know James when you got into heavy into digital photography. It was the year two thousand. That's when I first met you. And then you had your own studio. You're doing weddings and families and dog days yeah. and all that stuff. Then you segued into mining industrial and now 
it's kind of evolved to these new opportunities. And mm -hmm. you said something that was, I believe, key a second ago. You said they have values that align with you and your values. Can, can you touch on what some of those values are? You know, like, well, first of all, like, you know, it's the end product. You know, you're, they're always striving to create the best, always to be better. They're always adapting and evolving and, always looking for i mean i don't want to say it all comes down to money but i mean we do this to make a living and to create a future and eventually retirement plan so they're they're very go-getter um attitude um but then the team that they put together like i said works so well cohesively and uh -huh every person that does their job it's always to like the highest of their abilities and standards hold on i gotta yeah. keep talking i gotta yeah so guy. you know so it's always to the highest ability of the standards and then the end product that they put out whether that's going to be video or photography or motion graphics or animation it's always like always again a quality that in my opinion is just it's it's up there like it's it's mm -hmm. world-class quality so uh, that's that's where I want to be associated with. Uh, no, you know definitely. What I mean? So, I mean, uh, there's nothing worse than working with a company where you're putting out awesome work, but then the end product suffers and your work's yeah. included in it. It just, yeah. uh, it gives you yeah. a bad name, even though it wasn't your fault. Yeah. So like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. every time I watch a finished video from like from Panda, I'm just like, oh, man, that was just like, that was so cinematic. So, <laughs> so, 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 and their, their tagline is, you know, we bring Hollywood to corporate. That's cool. Right. All right. Uh, so, so do they have a YouTube thing? Uh, they have a Vimeo, Vimeo thing. It's pendaproductions.com. All right. We'll check it out for anybody who's interested. But the, the, the whole website and everything, everything's getting overhauled. It's all, it's all getting overhauled. So Rob's coconut delivery is there. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely have to check it out. Cause I know with my business, that's one thing I've been branched off. My wife is always like, why are you doing these podcasts or why are you doing video? Because you're not making money off. It's like, well, I got to get the standards going right now and that and, and get it going. We're starting to do a lot more video now. And I have a friend here that uh, we do a show here called John and Dave TV locally for your TV. And he right. does a lot of video and editing. So he's helping me with this. And so we're actually offering to corporate people here to do their branding video videos too. their three, five minute videos to put on their Facebook pages, things like that. So right, right. you got to expand, especially in this. Yeah. Hey James, yeah. remember uh, Bill from, he was in the capital of California. What's the capital city of California? He was, uh, a big member in no BS photo success. I, and I know Bill. Yeah. Remember him? He, uh, yeah. he, for like five years or so, he was the official photographer. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yep. Then he got into video. Yep. Now he's going gangbusters. He's got like 22 employees. Yeah. We called him grandpa. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. Cause his profile pic, he looked <laughs> like an old man. No, well, it's because his demeanor too was like an old man. He was we always laughed about that. He's just so calm. <laughs> But it's funny how that yeah. sort of, I, he, he didn't like that job working for the governor of California. It was very grueling, governor of California, you know, right. even though yeah, he met yeah. a lot of famous people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that them? Elevate yeah. Your brand. Yeah. And, uh, Ooh, look at that. So that, Ooh. that's all, that's all that's that person's green screen and everything else was added in. Nice. Is your work on there somewhere? Not yet. Would you do video if they said, "Oh, could you do a little side video?" Oh, I have. I do, I'll do the B-roll stuff like that. But I, you know, I'd like to do. I like to do more. Um, if you like, it, just for instance, like because uh, this right now, they're um, if you go to portfolio, and then you go to the Alamos. Uh, let me see which one. The Alamos promo video, right? Uh, this one. Yeah, go to the trailer and see like that. Like this is just a small one minute uh, thing. But uh, this was a job that we did in Mexico. Um, 2018 and this is where we're going back again uh and can you hear the sound a a no i don't think yeah okay the sound's pretty cool though on it but this was a fun uh this was a fun shoot see like a lot of this is just b-roll uh b-roll stuff right uh, but again try to tell the story this was just a teaser video that they did for uh for Alamo school but yeah it was it was it was a lot of fun so when we get into the interviews and the creative stuff and the underground stuff um the qual not the quality but the lighting and everything to finish that product is just yeah um, 
I really so like. Was it all just stuff mining in. stuff that you guys do still, like just like your photography, or did they the majority, the majority, like they've been doing mining for like oof, years. Like Victor's been doing, like as long as I've been doing my photography career, uh, Victor right. and Panda have been doing mining. So uh, they're well they've established. Been, they've been to hundreds of mines, hundreds of mines. That's a good uh, niche, man. That's a really good niche. Yeah, it's, it's um, very secure. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah. So, there's lots, lots of travel with them coming up, which is uh, exciting. Yeah. And, uh, and not only that, I mean, I get to hang out with my buddy. Like Victor and I are good friends, right? I mean, uh, uh -huh. we knew each other in. Uh, <clears throat> we went to kindergarten and grew up together, and then um, we moved. I moved away. <clears throat> we ended up going to the same high school together, but then he left down south. His family moved down south in grade nine. I hadn't seen him since, and he just so happened to see me on LinkedIn and noticed that I did mining. So he just reached out to me and said, Hey, uh, you know, I know it's, and how's it going, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, hope things are well. I see you do mining photography. We actually, you know, do uh, mining marketing and stuff like that. Would you be interested in shooting some stuff for us? And I said, yeah, he's like, well, we're going to Greece in two weeks. Would you like to come? And it's like, um, yeah, I would like to go to Greece. <laughs> that would be, that, that would be fun. So yeah, so literally met Victor at the gate at the airport. It was the first time we've seen each other in like maybe, uh, I don't know, 30 something years. I was like, hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Nice to see you again. And then we've been in constant contact ever since. Um, and they've been using me, uh, they've been using me for a lot of their stuff. They have other contracted uh, photographers, depending on what the needs are. And they're all awesome as well. But for the mining stuff, uh, for stuff like this, uh, they've been hiring me. So it's been a good relationship. It's been a good relationship so far and having a, having a good time. So. You know, it's exciting. Yeah. So, so lots coming up this summer. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've been busy. Things were uh, slow for a bit. It's just the way it is for that uh, time of year. But uh, yeah. yesterday I did a shoot for an equipment company. They have a cover of a uh, mining magazine coming out next month. So we had to, had to do a specific uh, couple of shots for the, uh, for the mining magazine. So uh, uh -huh. that turned out, that turned out well as a tight deadline. And yeah. Got a couple of shoot tomorrow, hopefully, and then yeah, and then I start traveling. So the month, next month and a half is strictly going to be traveling. Me actually, mixed actually, bag of goods, isn't it? I actually got to fly Joss to Toronto to for one weekend because there's no point in me even coming home because I'm right. home for like a day and a half and then have to fly out again. So it's just I'm just going to fly here to Toronto and we're doing a weekend in Toronto one time just so I can see my wife. So cool. make make it a mini holiday. Maybe go yeah. see a play or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to Bass Pro and buy more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Is she okay the, with that? I can either spend all the money I make or pay for all the stuff I already bought. <laughs> One or the other. Yeah, yeah, catch a so. Leafs or a Blue Jays game. Yes, I don't know. That's Always pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, yeah, it's cool seeing that, how you guys have come because I still remember 2007, 8 when I first got on to No BS Photo Success and seeing you two doing your little videos with your Canon G cameras, G1s or whatever. And now look at you. A7, Canon A70, right? And then the A7, oh, the A7 A80. Yeah. A A75. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you know, it's like what's interesting is like, you know, like in. in not to go back to Panda, but talking to Victor, you know, we're just talking. He asked me my question. He's like, well, what's your, what's your exit strategy? Cause you know, like I'll be 50 in two months, right? Like how long am I going to do what I'm doing? Um, you know, and then what am I going to do afterwards? Right? Like, it's not like I'm good at anything else. So it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but the other thing I also got to think about is like, um, like some of the jobs I'm doing, they're really physically demanding. And uh, like, I don't know how much longer, I want to do some of the, some of the photography work I do in the mining industry because yeah it's it it does take a toll uh, after after a while so uh, so Why I mean that? that so that well it's just uh, like yesterday it was uh, it was extremely hot I have a lot of gear it's extremely heavy to lug around um, you know even because I'm constantly changing so I'm constantly packing up moving lights uh, I mean after a while that just takes takes a lot on the back especially on the lower back and stuff like that so mm -hmm. I'm uh -huh. not getting any younger so i just got to think about stuff like that like do i want to be doing some of these more grueling things or should yeah. maybe i start training somebody to you know to do it so if i send me going to the same mine six times i'll just train somebody else to go do that all stuff. right you can hire me i'm in <laughs> yeah so i'm just yeah like uh, the next 10 years what do i where do i want to be what do i want to do so because right question. now the, the only way to further my business is just to get more clients uh -huh. that's it that's really it just get more clients more money but it's like uh i don't um 
I'm not getting too excited anymore about what I'm actually shooting. Uh, but the travel aspect of me is what's really getting me excited again. You like that? I do. Yes, I like it and hate it. I like it when I'm going. I hate it when I'm three quarters of the way through. It's like, why do we keep doing this? But <laughs> usually we come home. Usually you come home for like a week or two, and you're like, okay, well, what's the right. next place? Because you know, Rob, we did that. I was telling somebody about this yesterday. Uh, not yesterday, last week, <clears throat> where we write out our goals. Remember, we wrote out like our five and ten year plan on where you want to yeah. be, what you want to do, how much money you had. And one of my things yeah. was, and I still have this. It's in my my, my side. Really? I still have this. And one of this was, I will be a full time photographer and make uh, and and travel the world doing photography. And I was thinking at that time it was it really like a, uh, National Geographic type uh, thing. Well, it's close but, enough. But the thing is, I'm is I'm actually doing that. I'm traveling the world, and you know, and, that was your goal it, for that real. Was my goal. Yeah, I wrote it down. I could I could literally go get it and, and read it to you. That's cool. Yeah, but anyways, well, but that, I'm doing that's that how now. I got my my dream studio. You yeah. remember on Car <laughs> Avenue? Yeah, it's the same so, idea. Yeah, I literally told that. somebody last week because they wanted something. And I said, "You literally need to write that out on a piece of paper and stick it on your fridge so you look at it every single day." Every day. And then there's going to be a time when you're going to look at that, and it's either going to happen or you're going to pull the plug on it because your brain just comes accustomed to seeing it. I mean, that's how we raised our prices every year. You want to raise yeah. your prices? You write it. You write your new price down on a piece of paper or create that new price list and stick it on your fridge, and yeah. you look at that every day. And then one day you could be like, "Holy crap! I'm too cheap. I'm." pulling the plug and putting this new price pricing in place. That's how we did it for our weddings every time. Because when we raised our prices for weddings, it was like $1,500 a time, like an increase. Yeah. And that seems like a lot at first. Like, holy crap, I'm just, I'm going to start charging an extra $1,500 a wedding now. That's a lot. But mm -hmm. after a while, when you see that on the fridge every day, you're like, yeah, screw it. I'm just doing it. I think what you're saying is that you have to become psychically mentally emotionally yes. very comfortable with that idea before you can enact it and that's one that's a really good technique mm -hmm. to become comfortable with it to see it and yeah. live it imagine it your imagination is very powerful so yeah setting goals and i think it works i believe it works i know it works i've experienced it a million same, one times same, same here same here. Can't, you can't you can't <clears throat> let yourself be discouraged and go oh i'll never lose 80 pounds you know, if, if your ideal weight is say 160, you write down 160. That's your goal. You don't say, I will lose 80 pounds. You say 160 is the goal. And even though you think it's impossible, and then just have, <clears throat> and then just have faith, 100% faith that if you keep putting in the work in day in and day out, it will happen. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to have 100% faith that the process that you're doing will work. You know, yeah. the only the only thing that kind of screws that formula up is if they put a significant timeline. That's the only thing that can actually yeah. um, like stop that is a specific time. And I didn't reach my goal. But if you don't put a timeline, just say, OK, I'm going to be 160 pounds and I'm going to work at it every day. If you do that, eventually you will become 160 pounds. Right. If you have 100 percent. Yeah, it will work. it's all a mindset thing. Yeah. And I I I always tell people when they do these exercises some a lot of people get anal about oh what if i don't achieve it don't worry about that you get to change and modify you get to there's no rule that says i'm a loser because i didn't achieve it within that timeline just freaking add it for next year but if it doesn't if it doesn't work you just try something different that's something awful. different yeah and that's, that's, uh, the, ex the example i use james is yeah. uh I always wanted to be a sailor in the 80s. I read a shitload of books. In the 90s, I took the sailing course, the power squadron, and blah, blah, blah. And I bought a sailboat when Daniel was five. I don't know if I, I, I had that I, boat. I, I, I remember that pictures of that sailboat. You remember that boat? And I sold it the next fall. So yeah. the hap two happiest days in a, in a boater's life is the day he buys a boat and the day he sells it. So I realized I didn't want, I didn't want to be a sailor. I love sailing. I love the whole idea. But I didn't really want a. I didn't want to be a sailor. I wanted it what it represented, which I wanted freedom. So, more important to me than anything. So, I, that was my big realization. So, I bought a motorcycle. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's even better purchase. That's an even better <laughs> I, purchase. I think so. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So, but on your point, James, where uh, setting goals, it's just so so freaking vital. You so yeah. So now it. I have now I have other goals for the next ten years because yeah, yeah, I got other goals now. So. What's your big one? Retirement. You want to retire? Yeah. retire. 
What's that? I'll never retire because I don't want to be one of those ones that my dad retired and it just, I don't know. I'll be working till the day I die. I don't see myself sitting back and doing nothing. I got way too many hobbies to not retire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fishing being right up there. Fishing, motorcycling, jujitsu. So you can start your own little fishing. Uh, my friend does that in Orangeville. He actually has a fishing company that they'll take people out. I don't know what they call it. And they take them out and they teach them how to fish. and how to Yeah. Fish and... No, I don't want to do that. I just want to fish. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to fish my own. I want somebody else to take me out. Start your no, own just, just like I said, I'm just going to, I'm going to adapt to, I'm going to adapt because, um, you know, I don't want to like, I like being busy and all that, but uh, it'd be nice if I can get somebody else to do some of the jobs that are very repetitive, right? I'd like to do like, you know, it'd be nice to pick and choose which jobs I want to do. And then I will send uh, my assistant photographer or my other photographer on <clears throat> these other jobs that it's just, I just don't want to do them anymore, you know? So yeah, yeah I'm going to look at something like that maybe. John Busick does that for his weddings back in California. I remember seeing a, a creative live with him and he, does his weddings he has his assistants do all the stuff he doesn't like to do at the wedding well that's he, well, all that other reception type stuff and he just does the cool stuff well that's what rob did with me you know crap that he didn't want to do he just <laughs> he'd send me to do but that we used to do that as weddings as weddings you yeah. always had a sec either you had an assistant or a second photographer that would shoot yeah. whatever smaller weddings or whatever i mean it's not a common no, exactly. um i just uh it's it, I think it's taking me this long to like, I always used to say, well, no, I'm, I don't want anybody else to do it. I'm not going to have anybody else to do it. But now I'm thinking, well, if I can train somebody specifically to do the same way in what I do, but the hardest thing to train is not going to be the photography. It's going to be the, the customer service. Yeah. The attitude, right. the attitude, the professionalism, the gift of gab, like, you know, like, like that, right. That's going to be the hardest benchmark the personality. So you have to find, so you have to find somebody that's really good at that, you know? So I hear Rob's yeah. available. Yeah. There yeah. we go. <laughs> James is getting back into weddings. <laughs> yeah. I'll never shoot another wedding in my life. Yeah, <laughs> no, nope, not going to happen. Not going to happen. So yeah, so that's yeah, that's what's new with me. Just uh, I got uh, exciting travel coming up. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm learning a lot, I'm learning how to become a seasoned traveler now. Like you know what to bring, yeah. not to bring, um, even just uh, which equipment to bring now. Because every time I travel, it's about all said and done, you're close around a thousand dollars extra in just weight and just freight and just yeah. equipment freight costs. Yeah. Stuff have you like transferred that, right? over to like Godox and stuff like the battery? I'm all Godox. Yeah, yeah, I'm all Godox now. Um, yeah, everything's Godox, uh, except for my two LED panels. But uh, yeah. uh, even like, and, and I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find some really good lightweight small stands, but that still go to about nine and a half, ten feet high. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So I ended up ordering. I had found these thirteen foot stands, and they're a good price. And I ordered them, and I got them in. And crap, one of them weighs like six and a half pounds. So it's just like, oh my god, like this thing's so monstrous. Like I can't, I can't even use those. And you used to have those ones. I forget. I think it was you that the legs we automatically opened when you put them yeah, down. Yeah, when you they put it down light too, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, uh, not bad. Yeah. So there's one company like I actually have two. Adam, I left them in my bag. I was uh, carrying some that the videographer had, and they were nice. And um, the legs actually fold up instead of like, yeah, you know. I like have one up. of those. Those are nice, but the problem is they're only seven and a half feet. So by the time my backdrop right now, yeah. So by the time you put like uh, the big softbox on that drops down, you know, you're now you're at like maybe six and a half feet. So it's mm -hmm. just depending on how high a person is. So I'm trying to find like ten footers and that, but it's actually yeah. quite, it's actually quite difficult. And then yeah, again, yeah. I, you can find ten footers and bub, but try to find them under five pounds. That's the so yeah. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll come uh, at some point. Take well, it's interesting. So, it's yeah, traveling is, uh, yeah, I'm done traveling. I yeah, don't like so. traveling at all. He anymore. was like traveling, but yet right now he's where? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, 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 my, that's vacation. That's, that's my vacation, struggle. So. There's my struggle. So, but anyways, yeah, exciting. So, okay. Well, it's almost coming to the end of the uh, hour. I, um, I did um, equipment wise. I actually test drove a uh, the new Canon DSLRs the, or not the DLSLRs, the mirrorless, the mirrorless digital ones, uh, because I was thinking of switching over to uh, 
mirrorless, but I uh -huh. literally did a side by side comparison. And the only difference I could find was, uh, yes, the file sizes were a bit bigger, which gave me like maybe 15% more uh, of an image size. And, you know, high ISO, low noise, but sharpness wise, I didn't find any difference. Yeah. No way. Any difference. So I was like, you know what? I'll just stick with my my DSLRs for now and see about mine, one of mine's next, breaking down my main ones. So I'm, I'm looking at changing now too. Yeah. So and that, and uh, one of the main key factors. So I was looking at the, the Canon R5s yeah. and one of the main factors was battery power. Yeah. <laughs> the batteries drain so fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. And especially the in some R6 of the, is nice. the R6 and then especially in some of the cold, like, uh, you know, if we go up to, um, Alaska and all that, it'll be during winter. Like even when we go to Northwest mm -hmm. territories, uh, yeah. the next month is to film, uh, and photograph the ice road that they have in like, yeah. Batteries draining fast like that. Eh, yeah. You're talking about on the uh, mirrorless. They do. Yeah. On the mirrorless batteries drain yeah. fast because That's you, true. because it's either through the viewfinder or LED screens. Yeah. It's, it's both, uh, it's both, uh, They're LED, both LED right? screens. Basically. That's why yeah. I have 16 Sony batteries and mm -hmm. I bring chargers. When I do a wedding, I bring two chargers. Right. They'll always be up. Yeah. But how long does your current DSLR system battery last you? I remember those days. Oh, I can shoot. I can shoot probably, I could shoot a full wedding on one battery. Yeah. There you go. Like, or, I shoot all I shoot all day on one battery, no problem. No so problem. it's practical, it works, no need for you to switch the mirrorless. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I'll see about the cool. next round. I'll see about the next round of uh bodies that come out and I'll take a test. Yeah. So you contacted out. them and they sent you a system because yeah. you're part of the pro and CPS, thing. yeah. Yeah. And they said, Here, try it out. Yeah, yeah. Which was a cool thing. The only kicker to that I didn't like about it is like, yes, uh, okay, I can get this. Canon R5, uh, get me to send a body. I picked a few lenses and stuff like that. I test drove it for two days, and then you got to send it back, but you have to mail it back, and they're fairly heavy. And then you want to put insurance on that because it's rare. So it cost me like five hundred bucks to send everything back. Oh, really? By the you know, because it has to be back by six days. So it's like, well, crap, that's like five hundred dollars to test drive. I'd better off just buying the camera, trying it, and then just return it if I don't like it. <laughs> like you know what I mean? <laughs> like. In a yeah. sense, so every time you test drive something, yeah, is that going to cost me three, four, five hundred bucks now for mm -hmm. for returns? So I was a little bit. Well, do you have like a Henry's or something in Sudbury? No, no, it's here? gone. No, that's the problem. It's gone. Our Henry's is gone. That was, yeah. that was a real disappointment. Probably, probably never come back. I don't think so. It's too bad because I really liked uh, the fact that we just go down and talk to somebody and have something in our hands and check it out, get some advice and like huh. stuff like that. So yeah, or just go hang out away in Ottawa. But mind you, yeah. like uh, being a member of that Canon CPS, it's well worth it in my opinion because I've had two two lenses that I've had to send for repair. I had one clean in. It's just fast, 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 fast. It's uh -huh. really nice. Really nice having that option. That's cool. So, yeah, that's cool. So you're going to stick with your DSLR system for, I am a for now. Working now. And it works. It works. And for more reasons that are way more practical compared to you know, the reasons why others might switch to the mirrorless, like especially like a wedding shooter. That's fast well, that autofocus, the autofocus tracking on this yeah, the the, iPhone the R5 yeah. and R6 is just insane. Like it's yeah. and the new know. R6 Mark II is even better. Yeah. Plus the video now has an unlimited running time now. It used to be, I don't know if yours are like this, Rob. If you ever do the 4K video, it runs out after half an hour no. because it overheats. Yeah, it overheats. Yeah, do no, I never do video that much, okay. but uh, it's, it's, I think this is a really good and interesting point that you bring up because uh, a lot of people would just jump into the latest, greatest toys, yeah. but you have a practical application. And I think spending the 500 bucks to me is money well spent. In the end, I think you're ahead. Well, the other uh, thing too is I watch so many YouTubes on it on everything the good the bad the ugly yep. on i i watched so many youtube videos on on the bodies just to get know everything i watched tours on go through everything like yeah. i don't want to make an educated guess right but uh yeah. but yeah i mean i watched that's what we get back to that dp review that we were talking about like any reviews yeah. and anything or yeah it was done through uh i mean i just spent uh i just spent a crap load of money on a new fish finder and the first thing i did when i got home was i must have watched five hours of video <laughs> on it I just on, on everything about it right just that's like yeah. the flight we were talking about i watched yeah. so many videos about it before but and i'm yeah. like you i i use cameras yeah. until they fall apart basically i yeah. have 6d as my main camera and 7d as my backup right now my yeah. client doesn't care what i'm using as long as i get the no they, they don't exactly they exactly yeah. they don't they don't care they don't all care. right boys it's one o'clock all right 
thanks, James, for coming on board. We'll get you back in three, four months from now. Nice to talk like to you, that. gentlemen. Always nice to see you guys. I'm gonna I'm go gonna shovel the driveway and visit you guys. I'm gonna go shovel. I'll take you fishing. We'll All take right. you fishing. I'm gonna go shovel the driveway now. <laughs> All right, you enjoy. I gotta right, go guys. clean the uh, monkey poop from the front. <laughs> okay, we'll that's talk what to was guys. at his door earlier. Later. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to you guys.